So in today's video, we are going to solve a question on linear magnetic circuit. Now in a linear magnetic circuit, the reluctance is independent of the magnetic flux density and the relative permeability of the magnetic material is always constant. Also in the linear magnetic circuit, all the laws of electric circuits can be applied, be it Thevenin's theorem, Norton's theorem, Kirchhoff's laws, and so on and so forth. So let's try to solve this question. A steel ring of cross-sectional area, 50 mm square, has an air gap of 2 mm and has the same cross-sectional area as that of the ring. A coil of 2000 tens is wound uniformly around the steel ring. Now if the current in the coil is 10 amperes and the mean radius of the steel ring is 5 cm, relative permeability of the steel ring is 800, calculate A, the total reluctance of the circuit, and then B, the flux in the circuit. So let's try to put down the information that we derive from this question. Now we have the cross-sectional area of the steel ring to be 50 mm square. Now converting this value to meter square, we basically multiply 50 by 10 exponents, negative 6. So that is 50 times 10 exponents, negative 6 meter square. Also, for the length of the air gap, we have that in millimeter. So we are going to convert that also to meters. So we multiply that by 10 exponents, negative 3. And then we have the value in meters. We are also being told that the air gap has the same cross-sectional area as that of the steel ring. So the cross-sectional area of the air gap is also equal to this value, which is 50 times 10 exponent negative 6 meter square. Aside from that, the number of tens of the core is 2000. The current in the coil is said to be 10 amperes. The mean radius of the steel ring is 5 centimeters. Now converting this value to meters, we basically divide that by 100 or multiply by 10 exponents, negative 2. So the mean radius R equals 5 divided by 100 and that is 0 0.05 so we have r equals 0 0.05 meters so let's try to find the total reluctance of the circuit that is a now to find the total reluctance of the circuit the first thing we are going to do is to find the mean circumference of the steel ring and that is equal to the mean length of the steel ring so the mean circumference of the steel ring, which is equal to the mean length of the steel ring, is equal to 2 pi r. We know that to find the circumference, that is given as 2 pi r. Now we have the value of r to be 0 0.05 meters. So we multiply that by 2 pi. And then we have our answer to be 0 0.10 pi. So this is the value of the mean length of the steel ring. This is the mean length of the air gap. Now considering the circuit, the circuit is made up of a steel ring as well as an air gap. So the reluctance of this circuit is the reluctance as a result of the steel ring and the reluctance as a result of the air gap. So that is going to be the total reluctance. We are going to add the two. So representing this in a circuit, we have this to be the MMF driving magnetic flux in the circuit and then we have the reluctance as a result of the steering in series with the reluctance as a result of the air gap. So the total reluctance is going to be RT equals rs plus ra so let's try to find the values of rs 
and then RA and then we can add the two values so first of all let's find the value of RS now because the steel is a magnetic material the reluctance of the steel is giving us the length of the steel divided by mu naught mu r and then the cross sectional area of the steel so we have ls to be 0 0.1 pi or 0 0.10 pi divided by mu naught which is giving us 4 pi times 10 exponent negative 7 times mu r given in the question to be 800 times as which is 50 times 10 exponent negative 6 now simplifying this you are going to get 6.25 times 10 exponent 6 amperes per Weber so this is the value of RS next let's find the value of RE the reluctance as a result of the air gap is giving us LA divided by mu naught AE. So we have this equals 2 times 10 exponent negative 3 divided by 4 pi times 10 exponent negative 7 times 50 times 10 exponent negative 6. Also simplifying this, you are going to get 31.831 times 10 exponent 6 amperes per Weber. So this is the value of the reluctance as a result of the air gap. Now at this point, you are going to add the two values. So we have RS as 6.25 plus RA 31.831 and summing them up we are going to get 38.081 times 10 exponent 6 amperes per Weber so this is the value of the total reluctance of the circuit now B, we are going to find the flux in the ring. Now because the reluctance of the steel ring is in series with the reluctance of the air gap, it means that to find the flux in the ring, that is going to be the same flux in the entire circuit because the two reluctances are connected in series. So let's just find the value of phi. Now we know that the magnetomotive force F is giving us the magnetic flux times the total reluctance. Now we know the value of the total reluctance. We don't know the value of F. So we first of all need to find the value of F so that from the relation flux equals F over RT, we can find the value of the flux in the ring. So to find F or the MMF, we know that F is giving us the current in the core times the number of turns of the core. Now in the question, we are being told that the current in the core is 10 amperes and the number of turns of the core is 2000. So multiplying these two values, you have 20,000 amperes. Now since we have the value of F and then RT, we can find the value of the flux in the ring. So that is equal to F equals 20,000 divided by RT, that is 38.081 times 10 exponent 6. So 20,000 divided by 38.081 times 10 
exponent 6 gives 5.25 times 10 exponent negative 4 Weber. So this is the value of the flux in the ring. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.